Hello everyone, this is Ingame Moss with an unboxing and a breakdown of the demo. This is Sublevel Zero Redux for the PlayStation 4. Now the unboxing part of the video was for the signature edition of the game, which is uh, kind of this is the same thing as a collector's edition. Now there is a standard basic ver standard version of the game you can buy that doesn't come with the uh, art, art book as well as the soundtrack, but it still comes with the same game. As well as there was a small update around uh, 340 megabytes. It only really showed that it added a few little features. It didn't really show anything about fixing bugs within the game. So, and I this game's been out for a while, so I don't know if there's going to be any more updates after that. Go on about the game. This is a European version of the game. I do not know if there's going to be a physical release in the U.S. or even in Asian countryside. So it was a little surprising when I came across this and wanted to pick up. And I've had the game for a while and I've been playing it off and on. And I've been wanting to do a video for you guys on it. So here we are finally. Now about the game. The game, if anyone's ever played like a game like Descent. Or watched my videos of me talking about that game Descent. It's pretty much like a newer revamped version of the game. It's kind of the same controls and functions of it. And it's, it's kind of charming in its own way. But the... There's just certain objects about the game that can get a little frustrating and a little annoying here and there. But let's talk about the good side first. The good side is the game looks great and feels pretty good. It's fluid and smooth and the guns and all that stuff is really fun. I like the two different kinds of guns you can equip from the primary as well as your heavy guns. You got your typical uh, like uh, ammo gun or you got your laser gun. And you can c customize and change them and alter out them or upgrade them to be mini guns or shotguns or flamethrowers. And so on like a laser beam or a pulse cannon and so forth. Or you can do a giant rocket launcher or micro missiles you can shoot. As well as change out the uh, engine of your uh, ship as well as putting different holes. Which all will give you different kind of benefits and abilities not really abilities but benefits to the your ship you see statistically bars that tells you how much it's going to improve or decrease in the, on your ship now the really big problem about the game on this function is that the navigation in the menu is very very kind of frustrating you have to use your left joystick to navigate to the menu you don't use your d-pad and it doesn't look like it was really built mainstream easy for consoles it just feels like a direct port from the pc without any consideration of how small the text are as well as the uh, navigation with the controller it's not the most smoothest experience and can become quite frustrating at the beginning of the when your first time playing it but like i said though the, the, the controls are really fun and interesting and i like the descent uh, gameplay, but if anyone knows the scent, the game can become very disorienting and confusing where you're going, where you need to go, and so on and so forth. And a lot of people might get very, I mean, discouraged by playing it because you can get very, I don't know, even without like a VR headset, kind of just like uh, sickened by how disorienting from being upside down and left and right and everything like that. So I can understand how some people might get turned off. As well as, it's a little disappointing, this game could have been a pretty good VR game. Though it could be very sickening for some people who are not used to VR or playing in a game of this sort, of that style. But it looked like it had a potential of a, being a VR game. And some reason it does not support VR. I think that's a missed opportunity from the developers. But, again, the game is pretty fun. I do, uh, as more as you play, you unlock more stuff and be able to upgrade and change certain aspects of the ship. As well as that you'll be able to go deeper and deeper every time you beat the level. Now, the game is a roguelike, and every time you play it, it is randomly generated. So, you will never have the same playthrough twice. So, that's really fun. But, I did notice that even though with me continuously playing it, I kept seeing the same environments and same enemies quite repetitively. And it got a little boring at times especially if I, after my fifth time going through it and it is pretty difficult at certain moments even on the classical difficulties you got to be very careful and if you die you have to start all the way back from level one like again it is a decent little game and it is probably one of those worthy things to add in your collection if you ever get the time but like again with the disorientedness and just the overall main i don't know low budget feel sometimes it has not in terms of quality but just the terms of the grand scheme of the game it can just i can understand how some people might get pulled away from it and uh, sadly there was a massive game breaking bug in the game for me 
uh, this is, I've repeated the same thing twice, and I will put an ending at the video so you guys can see what happened. Because even when the recording, I had it happen again to me. But if there's a lot of things happen on the screen, like explosions, and you're shooting a bunch of missiles and lasers and stuff like that, it seems the, the game kind of stutters and kind of at certain moments and certain bosses in the games have a lot of projectiles and a lot of explosion stuff going on. I had the game lock up. One time I had it lock up and it got unlocked itself, but the this time in the video it locked up completely on me. So that's a very sad thing. And I even I tried this with the update and it still did it even with the update. So the update does not fix this issue. But again, it is a decent little game to have in your collection. I won't say it's the best thing to go out there and immediately rush to buy, but it's worthy. I really enjoyed myself with it. Should you get the signature edition? Well, the music's pretty good, so I always like a, a physical copy of a soundtrack, as well as the art book's pretty nice. Anything costs too much more for the signature edition than the standard ver version of the game. That's up to you, really. I'm just glad I picked it up. I think it's a little neat little game to have on my shelf. Though it stinks with the, the bug in the game, but I did get pretty far multiple times. As long as you can restrain yourself from having too many explosions going on, you should be able to get through the game without that crashing happening with you. So, like always, I will link things down in the description if you're interested to copy, which I think it's up to you. What you see is what you're going to get from the game. It's pretty much the entire experience, what you see in the video. So, thank you all for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. And I'll see you guys in my next episode. Bye!